Now, that, that gives an example of how uh, the cooperation as a feature of international development plays a role with, with sport and uh, what Australia has to offer uh, to developing countries and things can really take root if there is the right approach. There's, there's five uh, top level reasons why it's, it's very important to have sport in, uh, have a place in international development. I'm just going to name them and I'm sure during the course of the day you're going to be going into a lot more detail and exploring. But the, the first is for health and mental health and the promotion of healthy lifestyles and disease prevention. Uh, an interesting fact is the bulk of the world's poor no longer live in what we uh, term least developed countries. With the rise of new economies like China, India, uh, Indonesia, Brazil, the, the, the bulk of the world's poor, in fact, three quarters of the world's poorest people now live in what is known as middle income countries. And that can be very broadly defined. It's, it's, it's roughly people living on uh, or countries where the income can be just above $1,000 uh, um, per annum um, per person. So that's not a lot of money, but it can reach up to $10,000 as well. And as, as any of you have travelled in, in Indonesia or in Europe, China, you'll know that there's great disparities uh, of wealth and great inequalities. It's still an extreme poverty, particularly in India. But what it means is that the ch changing profile in disease, uh, the rise of non-communicable diseases, which is a feature in our country, diabetes, heart disease, and so on, is now becoming increasingly prevalent uh, with changing lifestyles, with rising incomes in countries like Indonesia and India and China. And so it's critically important actually to have uh, programs that actually get kids from an early age playing sport and doing physical activity because the, the rates of diabetes and heart disease and other non-communicable diseases, diseases etc., are soaring. Secondly, uh, and I've already touched upon it, that there's education is another prime reason for uh, promoting sport and international development. It's a powerful way to for children to attend and participate in school and uh, can help erode stigma associated with particularly marginalised groups. So they can be Indigenous peoples. Um, uh, across the board, people with disabilities in developing countries are the most marginalised peoples uh, we often find. So education is, is very important. And then at an adult level also, sport can be a very useful communication platform in adult education uh, regarding um, uh, areas around health promotion. So HIV and AIDS, for example, environmental sustainability, uh, reproductive health. And so up in PNG, it's quite common to see billboards and NRL players um, getting a message out about HIV and AIDS, for example, because there is an identification of the public with the sport and they, they know the, the, the players and it helps that communication about healthy lifestyles. Thirdly, uh, obviously sport fosters individual personal development, uh, leadership, um, uh, enhances life skills which can be transferable into other areas like uh, the job market, help them get a job, so there's economic spin-offs, uh, and it obviously increases self-esteem, self-confidence, and other social skills. Fourthly, and rather interestingly, Sport in international development can help promote unity and even peace building and conflict prevention. And the quote from Nelson Mandela here, sport has the power to change the world, is very appropriate. Um, through the decades of tension between Pakistan and India and several wars, uh, they still manage to play cricket with each other. And that's actually very, very significant to have uh, that, that, that outreach in a peaceful activity. And sport can be used quite constructively in conflict resolution and, and post-conflict uh, peace building activities. And so that's something that's quite pertinent to the Solomons uh, in their own neighbourhood. Um, uh, to see what our colleagues from uh, Timor say uh, later this morning. So it's a neutral territory and provides an environment where um, aggression can be controlled and regulated and transformed. So it's actually very important and it's also very cost effective. Uh, it's a lot cheaper uh, than setting a peacekeeping mission after the event. And finally, sport critically provides uh, or perhaps more gender equality. And all of the literature in international development shows that having a gender analysis is 
fundamental to making good interventions in alleviating poverty because there are differential impacts of poverty uh, on, on women and men. So in, in any activity that involves women, that builds their confidence, uh, that um, builds their self-esteem, that shifts norms within a community about the role of women, uh, sport can be, play a very, very useful role. So finally, to say that all of these elements that I've just described are actually pointing to the fact that uh, sport is integral to uh, advancement of human rights and the concepts of sport that are inherent in sport, such as inclusion, um, human values about respect for the opponent, acceptance of binding rules, teamwork and fairness, all actually principles that are contained in the Charter of the United Nations and also in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And so having that sort of a, uh, a relationship and an understanding that, that the role that sport can play in international development, but that it's rights-based, is actually very, very useful. I, I want to sort of finish off by just talking a little bit about my organisation. So we're the umbrella body for uh, uh, more than 130 Australian non-government organisations that do international aid development and aid charities. And Sports Men Matters is one of our uh, very important members. We have other members that are household names like Australian Red Cross, Oxfam, CARE. Uh, we have agencies that are distinctively um, Australian, like the Fred Hollows Foundation. A third of our members are faith-based, so we have both, uh, we have most, all of the church, mm -hmm. church mm -hmm. denominations have aid agencies, but also okay. um, uh, Islamic Relief and Development. Mm -hmm. And we're bound together by a number of things. One is it's a sector that has professionalised over the last three decades. And that's because when you're making interventions into other people's countries and cultures to do two good things, uh, that comes with, that's a great privilege. It's a privilege of coming from a wealthy country, but it's also with a great responsibility. There's been a lot of trial and error of what works, so it's not just enough to have good intentions in doing aid work overseas and development work. It's actually uh, about being professional and taking on board that there is a body of experience and practice that needs to be learned from about what works and what doesn't work. And we capture that in a code of conduct. Um, our code is voluntary but binding on our members. Uh, it carries uh, 50 principles but 150 obligations. And our members report annually to ACFIG on how they're going about in their programs overseas meeting those obligations. Some of them are just around, about, around governance of not-for-profit, which is a skill in itself, uh, but also there, there are a lot of the further principles are around how you do your work in other people's countries and cultures. So it has to be done with a position of respect, it has to be done in partnership, it has to be done in consultation with them, because ultimately your, only, your interventions, whether it be in sport or in any other area, are only temporary in that society. And so what you're trying to achieve is sustainable development. So you want to work with the people so that they can shape um, shape the intervention, uh, what you're bringing to the table, and shape and take ownership of it and make it their own so it carries on after you leave. And I believe that sports matters, um, uh, as you'll hear during the course of the day, that's absolutely what they're about, they're about sustainable development. I think sport uh, will play an increasingly important role under the new government uh, in international development. I think, um, as I mentioned, that, that program that kick-started kick -started AFL in South Africa uh, was done through ABI, but it was done with support from the Australian government as well. And I think there'll be lots of opportunities to discuss with the new government, Julie Bishop, where the role of sport uh, can assist Australia's international development activities working in partnership with these developing countries. Thank you very much.